Good morning, welcome to Creation Depot. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick little video here on how to do a recording for Zoom. So once you log into Zoom, you're gonna see this little screen here and it looks very similar from Mac as well. I'm on PC. And what you're gonna do is you will create a new meeting and that new meeting will launch hopefully on the right monitor. And then from in here, you will see a, um, a record button and then if you have Pro, you will see record to the cloud and you will see record on this computer. So um, there's a couple of little different variances here and a couple of different things that happen when you record. So I'm gonna go through them all, but the gist of it is if you don't have Pro, you're not gonna have this option and it will only give you the option to record. You won't have a pop-up menu at all. So those are the differences there. When you go to record, here's what's gonna happen. I'll just record to the computer for this example. I'm going to continue without audio because I'm actually using a different recording software to record this. So once this is happening, um, you're going to see here, it's going to say pause and it's going to say stop, right? And in the top left, you're going to see recording with a pause and a stop. And of course, they have the, the short keyboard shortcuts here, Alt-R and oh, what's Alt-P for pause. I don't know why it doesn't show up up there. That's interesting. Um, but what's interesting about this part is that if you hit pause, which I'm going to do, and then you hit um, start recording again, which is a play button, which again, doesn't make sense to me, but it's a play button. It's going to make one file. It's not going to make a series of files, which is important to know because if you are trying to say record like one segment for your office or you're trying to record um, your podcast, but you're not, you want to stop and talk to the person before you continue on with the podcast or whatever it might be. Just remember that if you hit pause and play, you're going to have um, one file at the end of the day instead of multiple files because if you hit stop, you're going to have multiple files if you stop and then record again and then stop and then record again. You're going to have as many files as you do for those sequences. One other thing I wanted to note, I don't know if it was just like a one-time thing, but I did well, it was more than once. It was maybe twice. Um, when I did stop, or excuse me, pause and play, I had some video um, and audio syncing issues. Not the first set of start and stops, but on the second one, I had, um, like, the audio was just slightly off. Like, the video was correct, but the audio was just slightly behind. I had to go into my editing software and correct it for a YouTube video that I was making. So I would say that if you're going to do pause and then restarting it, I would say maybe be cautious of, of what you're doing there because you might run into problems. So ever since I've ran into those issues, I have been using stop and then I just record again and then I still have to do the editing in my software. Um, you'll see in the top right here, it will tell you at the end of the meeting, it's going to convert it to an MP4, which is a video file. And as far as like piecing together the, the audio clips from using stop and then recording again and then stopping and then recording again, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it literally takes under 10 seconds for me to just drag everything behind each other in order. And it's it's the end of the day. It's a lot easier than dealing with trying to fix audio syncing issues. Um, because you never know how, what part of the, the, the video you're going to miss too. So because you have to cut that off in order to make the audio work. So it's it's just easier for me to do the stop and record, and I'm sure it is for everybody else too. The only way I could see that this is not being an issue is if you're doing podcasts where you don't have the video um, portion of it to worry about. So let's talk about what happens to all this stuff, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end, and when I end, it's going to bring up a document after it gets done converting it. I'm going to tell it to save to my desktop. Save it to my desktop and you'll see it over here on the side and this is what it's going to look like right there right so if I double click on this it's going to come up with an empty screen with just my avatar uh, picture but there it is so here's the thing um, if you are let's go back into our meeting if you are going to record and you want to if you have pro and you want to record it to the cloud I'm going to show you what that looks like really quick continue without audio we'll just let it run a few seconds so it's pretty quick here we're going to stop and then yes, we're going to save it to a cloud recording. Let me move that down here so it's a little clearer. And yes, yeah, we don't want to, there we go. All right, so again, it's going to stay up here. You're going to receive an email when the cloud recording is available. We're going to give it a few seconds here because it does take a few seconds to send it up to the cloud and then be ready to use. But we'll go ahead and exit out of here. And then we'll pause this. 
All right, so here we go. Um, I have gone ahead and logged in and gotten past the initial login screen because the initial login screen shows all my personal information. So when you first come here, you're going to go to zoom.us and then you're going to scoot past that. You're going to go over to recordings and you'll be presented with this screen. Do note that it does automatically delete stuff that's 30 days or older. So this is not like permanent storage, which is another reason that I don't use it. Now remember, this is only with Pro. The thing I need to tell you is, is that um, I tend to save everything to an external hard drive and I also have a backup to Google Drive. So why that's important is because one, it's not going to stay on Zoom forever and also you want to have backups of your backups. So I tend to have both. I have my hard drive and I have Google Drive so if my hard drive ever crashes I still have access to my video files. I have to tell you I've been doing YouTube for over a year now and I can't really remember any time that I had to go back and pull footage from a original file so I don't know how necessary it is to hold on to old stuff um, for very long anyway because like I said I haven't done had an issue with it and YouTube has your video so you can download your video again from YouTube so why would you pay for storage so that's that's kind of my rationale behind it but more to this interface what this is about so this is the one that we just did. If I click on it, it should go ahead and open up. Yeah, I can click here and actually see what we recorded, which is going to be nothing because I had myself muted and I didn't have anybody on screen. And then over here, we can you can do this from this screen or you can go in and do it from the other screen. It's the same way. Um, but you can go over to More and download your files, which we'll go ahead and do. It's going to download the two files here because they're small. If they were larger, they would download as zip files. We're going to go ahead and show all, show in folder, and then here are our two files. So it downloaded two. It downloaded an audio file, which I will go ahead and open up, move this over to the right screen. It's just the audio file. So if you're doing Zoom for recording your podcasts, this is the only one you're going to need. But you can also go in and get your video and audio file, your MP4 file. Now. I have mine set up in my Zoom settings so that I can actually get both. If you go into settings and you go over to recording, in recording you have the option to choose where you're going to save your Zoom files at. It is important for you to put this somewhere you're going to remember. I would suggest if you if you don't want to go digging for it, go ahead and put it on your desktop. If that's not going to be okay, then um, even you can even save it to your shared drive uh, or your, your spare drive, like your... Um, like I told you I had an extra hard drive. You can do it directly there too, but I do find things to be faster if you do it to your C drive. Also, I wanted to point out that if you are doing a podcast, you can record a separate audio file for each participant who speaks. The only problem with this is, again, lining everything up when you go to edit it. That's the only thing I will say, is that sometimes it's important because you're, you're trying to, to space things out and you don't want people talking over each other or that kind of thing. Um, or maybe you just have a loud webinar going on and you, you want to cancel everybody else out, you can just grab the person who's speaking into their own mic and it will take their stuff. So it is useful in a webinar atmosphere, but I leave it off because I, if I'm going to interview someone, it's usually only one or two people and, and we can control ourselves. <laughs> it's not like a big group, so it's not a big deal. Um, I would suggest leaving the timestamp off because it's very hard to deal with that in editing and a record video during screen sharing, make sure that is on. Um, because what it's going to do is it will put your, well, you can say video next to screen share in the recording. Um, when you're doing this, sh this one right here with the, the place video next to the shared screen, the recording, what it does is it will have like your block over here of your, if the screen share that you're doing, and it will put a little tiny window of you over here in the corner. So, it's not useful if you are the only one recording because it ends up giving the, all this black space, this negative space over on the right with your little tiny image. So it's it just ruins the video quality in my opinion. So I leave that one off as well. And so guys, that's it. That's all the settings you really need to worry about as far as recording. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below. I do check my comments here or you can catch me over on Instagram at Instagram 
excuse me, instagram.com forward slash Wendy underscore literal two T's. And uh, just send me your questions. I'm happy to answer them. So take care. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and don't forget to say thanks in the comments. I know it's kind of a weird one, but if you just write thanks, it could be super short. Just writing thanks actually really, really helps the video. And it's an easy way to say thank you. So I appreciate it, guys. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye.